So remember when Atlas launched and everyone was like, <laughs> well, that's not really true. A lot of people were like, oh, it's going to be the best thing in the world. It's so good. Oh, my God. And, and then it came out and they were like, oh my no, God. God. No, God, please. No, 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 no. Well, if you're going to launch a game that is going to be a total piece of shit then you have to at least work hard to improve the condition after it comes out. Now, I'm for sure not saying it's okay to have this happen. And yes, Atlas is just an ARC DLC that they decided to sell as its own game, as proven by the menu, the ARC menu, that was hidden underneath the Atlas menu. And when you selected the ocean biome, it took you into the Atlas character creator sheet, but whatever, can't reverse that decision now. I'm not saying any of that is okay. It's not. It's bullshit. But if that happens, you damn well gotta kick it into overdrive to get the game playable, which they did, or rather are still doing. But regardless, there are some positive steps being taken. So the game launched directly before the holidays, but not at the point where it makes any sort of sense, like when there's plenty of time to figure out whether or not to buy it as a present for anyone or something like that. At the awkward time, like right as everyone has mostly finished the gift shopping and is actually unwinding with family. Not to mention the what, four or five plus delays and the timer that counted down to zero multiple different times and kept debating everyone. So yeah, it was off to a rocky start to say the very least. But all that aside, the game comes out and it's completely unplayable. And not in the hyperbolic sense where it's like a bit of lag and it's uncomfortable to play. Like, oh, it's unplayable, there are minor issues. No, like literally unplayable where most everyone couldn't even log in. When you did get in, most of the time, you spawned in the ocean, in the middle of the ocean, and just died or got stuck in starter towns because of too much desync. Other times, characters were just getting deleted flat out or couldn't respawn ever, and I could go on for days about it. But yeah, it was legitimately the worst functioning game of 2018 at launch, hands down. So, in that situation, what needs to happen? Well, they need to kick it into gear and get things running because pricing a game at $30 and having all of that happen, that's completely unacceptable. I halfway expected them to just leave it. Most players had to sit in a menu for like six hours plus before they could even attempt to play, so their Steam time was above the two hour trial period, disqualifying them from a refund unless they jumped through special hoops. So with that in mind, it seemed like a pretty stone cold scam that they would just abandon and maybe make a statement after New Year's or something like that. Well, they didn't do that. Instead, there were updates every few hours over the entire duration of Christmas and all the way through into New Year's and beyond as well. Version after version released, restart after restart, and slowly, painfully, the servers became playable. Now, to be very clear, this isn't me praising them for doing anything right. This is me acknowledging their drive to fix their own mistakes and fixing them in a transparent and timely way, while displaying the proper work ethic that should be demonstrated after launching one of the most botched games in recent history. The game is still a reskin that fell flat on its face, but instead of cutting and running, the developers are standing by it and working to make it better.
Here's the thing, there's still a long way to go. There are some 700 islands on the map, but those islands are all claimed quickly, so unless you join a giant Zerg group, you're probably not going to find any place to build. Getting started on the game now, if you intend to use official game servers as a fresh group, is an absolute nightmare. And beyond that, there are bugs, glitches, and various balancing problems that plague the game. So at this stage, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's still a dear god, don't buy this shit. But if we hold steady on the current course, with updates launching every day at least that improve the experience in a few months or so to a year, the game may actually amount to something. Now, the title of Early Access is often a shield used by a lot of fanboys to justify themselves getting ripped off. Maybe it's just because they are embarrassed that they bought the game and they actually regret it. Maybe it's because they are just idiots and they don't possess any sort of fiscal discipline. Or maybe it's because the money they spend is not in fact their own, they just swiped mommy's credit card. Who knows, but regardless, the title of Early Access is used in the gaming industry and by avid supporters as armor against criticism. Since Atlas is such a fresh instance of this, and a poignant example of the phenomenon, I want to use it as a jumping off point to discuss the plague that is early access titles. This relates to many games, but is perfectly representative of both Ark, the previous game that the developers behind Atlas worked on, and now Atlas itself. Early access flipped the script. In the old days, certain groups of players would be paid, actually paid, to beta and alpha test games. I've done it a bit myself in the past, and it's not what you may think or expect. I was not granted access to the full game and allowed to roam it at my own leisure. I had specific areas and sections to scour over and repeatedly test. The idea was to diligently and intentionally find every single bug, glitch, and exploit possible, then report it in detail so that the game could be methodically improved before launch. Well, now, with the concept of early access having gone mainstream, developers don't need to hire beta and alpha testers. They can just sell the game as is without even a shred of preparation. Players, for some reason, are okay with paying them to test their buggy, glitchy mess. And even if you can get behind this and accept it as is, it gets even worse. Instead of getting paid to endure a dysfunctional mess, players now fork over their own money to play it. Oftentimes, these games are in such an early stage that they may even end up failing, thus nullifying your purchase entirely, or going free to play like Islands of Nine, for example. Sucks to have bought that one. You pay to play early access, and a few weeks later, the game is then free, completely free. But no refund, ah ah ah. Anyways, you pay your money to test the game for them, and then in the testing phase, in early access, they sometimes even offer and release paid DLC. This is the exact scenario with Ark Survival Evolved. Arguably the parent game to Atlas, the game got released into early access, and during that early access, they added in paid DLC. That makes no sense. In a lot of ways, DLC renders past content semi-obsolete, because shared world multiplayer DLC usually denotes some form of further progression, power advancement, or higher level material. As a result, players that do not have the DLC are at a disadvantage in some way. For some games, it's worse than others, but imagine if Destiny 2 had released DLC during an extended beta period. The DLC raised the light or the power level, and all of this happened before the game was even out. That would be completely absurd, right? Here's a better example. Look at Red Dead 2 Online. It's a beta, so they say, but in this beta they have already opened up microtransactions, and I would be entirely unsurprised if they released price tag gated DLC without even addressing the beta tag itself. It's becoming more clear every day that at best, the Red Dead 2 beta is being used to circumvent patch approval times, and at worst, it's literally meaningless and they just did it so that some of the less intelligent fanboys might defend them. To further highlight the progression of this trend, game betas are now being sold more often than not as pre-order bonuses in the AAA space especially. I know we're getting way off topic here, but we'll get back to Atlas soon enough. I promise. Game betas are used as incentives to pre-order, but they aren't betas at that stage. They are demos. Demos are supposed to be a sneak peek at a finished product to entice consumers into buying it. Some of the more seasoned gamers watching this may remember demo discs in the back of certain magazines. So what we have now are demos being labeled as betas used to sell the game before it's even released and before there is really enough information to understand the title, preying on the excess hype and impatience of modern gaming culture, while other titles flip the script and rather than pay the right players to properly test their game, instead they sell their untested mess to the community at large as a first step and then further monetize it as if it's a full product while keeping it in the shielded, low responsibility bubble of early access. 
Consider Atlas again. There have been a multitude of patches and a great deal of work put into making the game even functional on a basic level, but that work has taken place over the span of just a couple of weeks. Why could that work not have been put in before making it publicly available? Make the servers actually functional before selling your product. It demonstrates the creeping trend. And I talk about this constantly. The practice of selling less for more, more often. Take an ARC DLC, sell it as its own game. Sell it before even booting up the servers, and then fix it after the fact. Once you get it functional, even though by definition it's still an unfinished and unready product, sell the add-ons, put in microtransactions, sell less for more, and parcel out what's left. Eliminate the cost of real, skilled, articulate, and dedicated beta testers that help improve the experience before everyday consumers dive in. Just sell it to the public right away, and all the while pioneer new ground for other development companies to follow suit. I legitimately admire the crunch time effort that has been going into improving Atlas these past couple of weeks, but it's happening at the wrong stage of development. After they hyped it up, made a big countdown timer, and then launched it into a brick wall headfirst when everyone on an internal level had to know it had no shot of doing anything other than face planting. They could have delayed a matter of weeks and launched something that was relatively stable and functional, but instead we see further advancement in the continuous trend of sell it faster, sell it sooner, and sell it with as little functional material as possible so that further monetization has maximum potential. Atlas is an ARC DLC, but fine. Accepting that fact, we can still see the bare bones framework of a game that might be something amazing, someday. Could be a year, could be two, and it is slated for an early access period of two years before full release, but this creeping trend of selling products earlier and earlier in their development stage, but still treating them as consumer-ready projects with marketing campaigns and countdown timers and all that sort of stuff, that's a really slippery slope. I have to acknowledge that Atlas is making a world of progress, but if you view the gaming industry as a series of races, especially on a competitive development level, why are we allowing the starting line to be moved further and further backwards? Eventually the runners will stop making it to the finish line. It doesn't help that the industry has become increasingly front-loaded either. Releases make the bulk of their money in the first initial sales boom, with certain exceptions to that of course, but they are then, mostly, unfinished crap that require invested time and effort to then flesh out. The incentive to do that diminishes further and further every day. Why not just release an unfinished early access game, let it die, and then move on to the next one? Food for thought, because that's the path that we're on. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up. I respect the work that the Atlas devs are putting in, but it should not be in the position where this type of work at this frantic pace are even necessary post-release. That by itself signals improper release practices and a bad trajectory for the industry, especially early access titles, which kind of blow my mind in and of itself, but whatever. If you want to get involved with Upper Echelon, check out the links down below. We have a Facebook community, Discord server, and our own gaming forums. And with the release of Division 2, we'll soon be kicking it up a notch with various different events. As always, thank you for watching. I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Have a nice night, everyone. <laughs> No vea, eh, para Sevilla. Y me, me, y el último que cuando ya salió la bien de regla, estamos llorando. Me, me cobró el tío la. Me cobró a 500 veces. Y ya no fui más. Me fui andando a coger los amarillos hasta hoy.